What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're going to be working on a 2015 BMW X1 E84. Today on the X1 behind me, we're going to be covering how to replace your front brakes. This is going to be applicable to all your E84 chassis vehicles, as well as your E9X vehicles without the M package brakes. In front of me, we have a pair of Zimmerman rotors with Akimono brake pads. This is one of the many kits available on FCPO.com. To this kit, we also added a rotor set screw, which is not always needed, but sometimes they do oxidize and rust in place, so the heads will strip on them. We do recommend replacing them if you live in an area where your vehicle sees salt. We're going to go ahead and do them on these cars just as preventative maintenance. The kit also includes a BOA brake pad wear sensor and the clip that holds the wear sensor in place. Those tend to get brittle and crack over time. Sometimes you'll see them being held together by zip tie. So all included in the kit, you'll have everything you need to do this DIY. Typically, these are gonna last you anywhere from 40 to 60,000 miles. It truly depends on your driving habits. A couple of things you can do is first, check your dash. Do you have any lights on the dash? This vehicle specifically has triggered the warning, meaning the brake pad wear sensor has completely worn through to the contact point, triggering the light on the dash. If you have that, and more than likely you need brakes. Which side do you need though? Do you need fronts or your rears? That is gonna be followed up by a visual inspection. It's pretty easy to tell how much meat is left on the pads. On these vehicles, you have a good view, even with the wheel on usually. Anything less than two millimeters on the pad, you wanna go ahead and replace them. If your brake disc is starting to develop a lip either on the inner or upward side of it, then you wanna go ahead and replace this as well. And in some extreme cases, you may feel some shuddering under heavy braking. That can usually mean a warped rotor, but don't rule out or not suspension components either, as those can often be a culprit as well. But before we dive into this DIY, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this job. For this job, you're gonna need a torque wrench. We have both half inch drive and three inch drive. Same thing goes for the ratchets, anything that can handle 16 Newton meters all the way to 120 Newton meters. We're gonna be using an 18 millimeter socket, a 17 millimeter lug bolt socket. We have a six millimeter hex and a seven millimeter hex. To compress our pistons and the calipers, we're gonna be using CTA 1465. This is a single piston tool, a small flathead screwdriver, a caliper hook, and you can use a bungee cord or zip ties, whatever you have lying around, a small wire brush, a wire wheel attachment on a drill works really well as well. Uh, we have a large hammer in case our rotor is used to the hub, which I have a feeling these will be. Um, some brake clean is a nice to have along with some liquor molly ceramic paste and an impact gun to get the lug bolts off of our vehicle. Now we know what tools we're working with, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, before we begin, we want to acknowledge where the brake master cylinder reservoir is on our X1. So this vehicle is gonna be located on the driver's side underneath this cover. It's got two small tabs, one on the front, one on the back that hold it in place, a little rubber grommet. Once you remove that, you have access to the reservoir here. You can check how much fluid is in it. If you feel that you may overfill the system, compressing the pistons back in, you can always pull a little bit out before you start your brake job. In this case, we're actually gonna be doing a DIY on this vehicle, uh, explaining how to use a motive bleeder. So we are gonna be revisiting this again. So I'm not too worried about what the fluid in there looks like right now, but it's a good point to also check it, inspect it. If the fluid's getting a little bit darker, you wanna consider doing a flush. But with that, now we can go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, my good people, today we're gonna to be focusing on the driver's side of the X1. However, these steps are gonna be identical to the passenger side. The reason we're focusing on the driver's side though is this is a side equipped with the brake pad wear sensor. The other side will not have one, so we wanna show you how to do the whole enchilada here. We're gonna be working on the lift. However, this is a floor jack and jack sand type of job. Um, for those of you that do not have an impact gun like we do today, in order to remove these lug bolts, you wanna break them free with the car still on the ground, wheels still on the ground, that way this isn't spinning on you. Once you break them all just a little bit free, then you can raise up the vehicle and remove them the rest of the way. Today, we're just gonna zap them off. We have five 17 millimeter lug bolts, so let's get started with that. Be mindful when you remove the last lug, the wheel's gonna wanna fall, so just brace it so it doesn't drop on you. With our wheel off, we now have a better view of where we're gonna be working. First thing we wanna do before we take anything off, I always like to make sure that this set screw is gonna come out. The last thing I want to do is 
take everything apart and get to the point where I can't get the rotor off. So we're gonna grab our six millimeter hex and just work on breaking that free. If you need to, you can use some penetrant before you go ahead and attempt that. We're gonna test our luck today and just kind of go for it. So with that six millimeter hex to break this free, make sure the most important thing here is that the hex bit is all the way into the set screw. Last thing you wanna do is strip it. Give it one good yank, no problem, broke free. All right, now at this point, we've rotated this a bit to give you a better view, but the next step is gonna be removing the anti-rattle clip. For that, you wanna simply push from the center here and push upwards to the outside of the caliper to unhook the two small tabs. I like to use a small flathead screwdriver. Keep one finger over the clip so it doesn't bounce into your face as you remove it. And just like that, we have it off. Next, we're gonna work on removing the brake pad wear sensor, and we're just gonna go ahead and remove it in full and get our new one routed so that when we're done with our brake job, all we have to do is clip it in at the end. So come a little bit closer and we'll show you how to unroute that. All right, we're gonna start by removing the sensor from the brake pad. Now, something to note, it really only goes on one way, but the sensor is always gonna be on the inboard pad. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and just pull this out. The light's already been triggered on the dash, so we know that this is bad. In this case, it is completely squished, so no problem. We'll go ahead and just pull it out from here. Following along the back, we have the white clip on the metal portion of the crimp portion of our soft line. As you can see, this one's not in bad shape. It could have been reused, but this will probably break as soon as I do this. Yeah, and that's where the problem lies in these. They get brittle. They're really only one-time use. Um, you can also note the orientation. These have a small slant to them. In this case, the top is slanting towards the inside of the wheel well, the bottom is slanting towards the brake caliper, if you will. We're gonna go ahead and toss that. Now we're gonna follow up the top of our knuckle here. There's a small black plastic clip that holds the line in place. Just pop that open and you can sneak it out. Moving up along, you have a small metal tab here that retains the line as well. Just pull it up. And then lastly, you have this junction box which also has a small metal tab in front of it. But we're gonna go ahead and open it up from the bottom here. Just mindful there's usually a ton of debris in here. It's a good time to clean this out. I'm gonna pull our line from a cable from this last tab. And here is our old brake pad wear sensor. There's a small tab, a locking tab on the harness end of the vehicle you're gonna press in to unlock and then you can pull the sensor out and throw it in the trash. We can take our new sensor. These are keyed. They really only go one way. So just take a quick look at them before you insert it and lock it in. Pretty straightforward. There we go. We're gonna get a little bit of this debris out of here. Tuck that back in there. Let's swing our brake cable over. Be mindful again, this cable ran behind the sway bar end link, which is behind the strut here. So you wanna make sure it's all routed the same when you put it back together. We can lock this box up. Now, starting with the first tab right outside of the junction box, we'll just get our brake pad wear sensor cable in place there. Bring it back up front. One more metal tab here. Again, these all have little notches or grooves in them. So they really only go on one way. And then we're gonna hang tight on installing the new white clip and we're just gonna let this hang out to the side for now. Now with that situated, we're gonna work on removing the two dust caps on the back of our guide pin boots here. You can just pop them off with your fingers or use a small flat -head screwdriver. And now we can get set up to remove the two guide pins so that we can take the caliper off, press the piston in and just hang it off to the side for install later on. All right. Now with the dust caps off, we're gonna work on removing the guide pins. For the top one, you may want to use a extension on your ratchet, depending on what kind of seven millimeter hex bit you have. If you have a long one, you might not need it, or if you're using an Allen key style tool, you may not need it. But for us, we're just gonna grab a small extension. Just keep that in mind when you do this job. It's really just for the top seven millimeter hex on the driver and passenger side. It's really to clear the soft line. You can do it without it, you'll just be there all day on small increments. Once you have the guide pin pretty much all the way out, sometimes you can twist your hex bit at an angle and kind of use it to 
pull the hex bit out. If not, you can push it through from the front side with a small flathead screwdriver. As you can see, the threads on there protruding pretty easily from the bracket, from the caliper itself. So we'll do just that. We'll take our screwdriver. We're just gonna pry the guide pin out and we're gonna clean that up and set it to the side. Now we can undo the bottom seven millimeter guide pin. Now we have the guide pins off. We can go ahead and pull our caliper off. Be mindful the outboard pad may fall unless it's stuck to the caliper itself, which appears to be the case on our end. The goal here is not to hang the caliper by the soft line. So avoid that at all cost. I'm gonna pry this old brake pad off. Well, these are genuine BMW pads and at 80,000 miles, there is a chance these are maybe the second set this car has gone through. Genuine BMW Jared pads. We're gonna keep our inboard pad here for a moment. And we're gonna use our piston compressing tool now using the pad kind of as a spacer slash brace so that we don't go directly into the piston and risk damaging our piston. And we don't wanna mar up our new pads. So we're gonna use the old pad now. These should go in pretty easily. If you're having a hard time compressing the piston, then more than likely you have an issue with either the caliper, um, perhaps you have a collapsed brake line. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this job. We got our CTA tool in here. Try to center it as best as possible. The last thing you wanna do is compress the pad or compress the piston in at an angle and cause it to go crooked. And here's a better view. It's also a good point to, a good time to inspect the seals, make sure none of them are ripped. And we can just turn our tool until it bottoms out. All right, the tool has stopped. Once it bottoms out on its own, that's as far as you want to go. No reason to over compress anything. I'm gonna pull this old pad off. With the pad off, you can see our brake pad wear sensor in here and you can see the small amount of copper lining in here. It's gonna be a little tricky to see with the lighting but once that has made contact with the brake disc and we have worn through the plastic here, it triggers the light on the dash. So these were certainly due for a replacement. I can say these are way below two mil of thickness. And here's why we use our old pads. As you can see the dimple we put in the pad. Would the new one be okay if we did that? Probably, but there's no reason to mar them up. So that's just something to look at there. While you have the caliper here, shake off any dust, any loose rust. Just get that off now while you have the opportunity to do so. If you need to, you can go in here with a wire wheel and clean that up. We're going to take our caliper hanger tool. And I like to hang these by the coil on the suspension and the openings on the front of the caliper. Something like that, just to keep the tension off our soft line. Now we can head back to the knuckle and work on removing the caliper carrier. With the caliper off, now we have two bolts holding our caliper carrier in place that we're gonna to wanna to remove. For that, we're gonna need a 16 millimeter socket. You can also use a wrench if you wish. We're just gonna use a small shallow impact socket on this half inch ratchet. It'll give us enough leverage to break these bolts free. Once they're broken free, you should be able to remove them by hand all the way. These are reusable. However, if there's any grime or debris on the threads, make sure you clean them up before you reinstall them. With the caliper carrier off, the main focus points here are gonna be the channels in which the ears of our brake pads ride in. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you wire wheel those really well. That's gonna be this area here and here and the surrounding. Same thing with the other side. Wire wheel them, brake clean them off, and they'll be good to go once we get ready to install. But with that, let's head over to getting our brake disc off. For that, we're gonna need our six millimeter hex. Make sure it's in all the way. Before I remove the set screw all the way, I can already tell you that this rotor is seized to the hub. So we're just gonna take our hammer, give it a decent whack, and break it free. If you don't have a set screw in place, you can use a lug bolt, just thread one back in a decent amount, and then you can use that to hold the brake disc as it comes off. The last thing you wanna do is drop this on your feet and hurt yourself. These were crusty. And take these to the recycling bin. With that off, we're gonna work on cleaning our hub up now. That's where the wire brush or wire wheel is gonna come in really handy. Main focus here is gonna be the mating focus where the disc sits on the hub. Zimmerman doesn't recommend or require you to use 
any sort of anti-seize when using their uh, zinc coated rotors. However, I know just from experience, and I'm sure most of you do too, if you live in the rust belt, no matter what coating's on there, these are gonna rust again and they will seize onto the hub. So we're gonna go ahead and coat them with Lico Molly ceramic paste anyways, just as insurance. It's not gonna hurt anything. And it'll give us a little bit more peace of mind. And with that, we can just hit everything with a little bit of brake clean. Then we can take our liquid molly ceramic paste and coat the hub. We just got our fresh can after using this for a year. Our old can finally gave out. Now with that coated comes the next step, which is going to be installing our new brake disc. But before you grab your new rotor, make sure your hands are clean enough to handle it. The last thing you want to do is get your greasy mitts all over them. You don't want to hit those zinc coated rotors with brake clean as you will deteriorate the coating on them. So if you need to change your gloves, wash your hands, or just handle them maybe on the edges at best. Um, again, we're going to do our best to keep our new rotor nice and clean. We'll get that on there and we'll situate it with this new set screw. So let me grab that now. And so for that, we're just going to set our new rotor on. Rotor, brake disc, tomato, tomato. And then I always like to coat the seat of the set screw area a bit as well, just to keep it from rusting onto the rotor itself. If it's not seizing into the hub, sometimes they can seize into the rotor. This gets torqued down to 16 Newton meters. Today we're just going to use the old calibrated wrist and snug them down. We'll get this at a more comfortable spot for us to work. Just make sure that the brake disc is seated all the way onto the hub when you go to tighten this down, just like so. All right, and then personally, just as insurance, because I've drilled too many of these out in my past and maybe in my future, I'm just gonna coat this in a bit and basically encapsulate this with ceramic paste. I would rather have to clean this off next time I do brakes on this vehicle, if I do them again, than have to drill this out. So that's gonna be that. Now with that situated in place, we can take our caliper carrier once more, which we've already cleaned up and reinstall that. I'm going to start by hanging it with the top bolt first. The scan that started by hand. This can be a little tricky to line up sometimes, but it will go on once you get the holes lined up nicely. You can pretty much thread that bolt in all the way by hand. Now we're going to torque both of these 16 millimeter bolts down to 110 Newton meters. So we'll set our torque wrench up for that. There's our top one. Now we're going to go ahead and install our pads. We're going to start with the inboard pad first. You can choose to lube these up. I like to, especially when the pistons start to grow out a little bit. One thing to note, depending on the manufacturers, sometimes these clips can be a little too wide. If you need to, don't be afraid to cinch them down a bit with some pliers just so that they can pop into the piston a little bit easier. We're going to lube up these tabs a bit just so that they don't corrode to our piston lube up the ears a bit where they ride on the caliper carrier. So for that, you already know we're going to use our favorite liquid molly ceramic paste. All right. Goal here is not to get any paste on the pad itself, obviously. You don't want to contaminate the material. We'll set it onto our piston and just pop that in like so. Then we'll take our outboard pad and do similar, we're gonna lube up the ears a bit. And then we can slide that onto our carrier here, just like so. And we'll take our caliper off of the hanger. Don't forget to take the hanger off. I can't tell you how many of these I've sent off with cars before. Look, seriously, I can't tell you, they'll fire me. And then we'll slide our caliper over like this. And now we're going to go ahead and install our guide pins. If they have a little bit of gunk on them, clean them off. Scotch right pad, wire wheel, just make them looking nice. At this point, my good people, I let you decide what you want to do. You can choose path A or path B. For me, path A is going to be using a little bit of this Lico Molly ceramic paste on the guide pins. BMW doesn't require any sort of lubricant on the pins. I've been doing it this way for the last 14 years, and I don't see any difference doing it with or without. Uh, personally, I like using it makes removal of the guide pins a little bit easier. So we're gonna go ahead and just add a small dab to them before we feed them into the boot here. And then we're just gonna push them through. 
Do the same thing with the bottom one. Again, I'm just doing a small dab. It'll spread itself around as we torque and ratchet these back in. There you go. Now we're gonna grab our seven millimeter hex and just drive these in by hand until they're slightly snug. And then we're gonna torque them down to 35 Newton meters. Don't forget to put your dust boot caps back on. While I have you right here, we can install our new clip. That's gonna go on the crimped portion of the soft line. Just like that. And take our brake pad wire sensor and feed the white portion of that through. And then I'll let you get a little bit cozy and we'll show you how to install it on our brake pad here. With the brake pad wire sensor, it's important to note the flat portion of it is gonna to go towards the piston and the raised portion of it with the wear indicator inside of it is gonna to go towards the brake disc. They are notched, so this copper area is gonna sit on the pad. This small copper retaining clip is what keeps them from falling out. So as you saw, our old one was worn already, so the wires just came out. But if you go to redo your brakes and you're not replacing the sensor, this clip loses its ability to retain itself into the pad after you pull it out once. So we do recommend you replace them every time. Set it into place, just pop it in. If you need to, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to drive it in the rest of the way. Just like that. And then if you need to, you can adjust how much is hanging out here. One thing I like to do with these, usually they come this way is you pop the bleeder cap off and there's usually a little notch in them for the sensor there. And you secure it like so. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our anti-rattle clip once more. These can be a little bit tricky sometimes. They're a little bit easier to remove than they are to install. But the goal here is similar to removal. We'll get both tabs on either end on each ear of the copper carrier. Then we're gonna take our screwdriver once more, our flathead screwdriver, and holding back with one finger, we're just gonna pry up against our clip here with our rotor, just like that. And then you can use the back of your screwdriver to pop it into place. And now with that, since this car is equipped with electronic steering, we can just situate ourselves into a better spot for our wheel to go back on. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna get our wheel back on. Make sure you line up your lug bolt holes as best as possible before you seat it on here. And we're gonna go ahead and start our lug bolts by hand. I always recommend you start them by hand. Last thing you wanna do is strip one of these as you're finishing up your brake job and not be able to drive your vehicle. That would not be a good time. Now we're just gonna use the impact to snug up the bolts. We're not torquing them down. Um, we're just going to apply enough pressure to where the wheel is seated evenly on the hub. Then we'll drop the car down and finalize the torque on the lug bolts. Do this in a star pattern. Whenever you're tightening up wheels, you always want to do a crisscross pattern. Now with that, we can drop the vehicle. Now with the vehicle back down on the ground, we're going to torque all five 17 millimeter lug bolts to 120 Newton meters using our CTA extended sockets, which are really nice. It keeps the ratchet away from the body of the car on most vehicles. I'm going to tighten these in a crisscross pattern as well. Boom, baby. And with that, my good people, that is going to conclude this DIY for today. Overall, a really straightforward job on the X1. Definitely a good beginner's DIY video and what I call a great driveway slash garage floor DIY. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today or there's a specific job you want to see us do on the E84 chassis, leave that in the comment section below. And if you like this DIY and you want to see more like them, please consider subscribing. We make new ones all the time. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.